So I can't quite believe it, but for the next three months, here in Nuremberg in Germany, I have my own street photography gallery. And in this video, I wanna show you the process of how I got from you know the beginning to having this gallery and give you an overview of the gallery itself because obviously most of you will not physically be able to make it in person to see it, so you can see it right here. Let's first start with where the gallery is. It's located at the home of X Photography in Nuremberg in Bavaria. So Nuremberg is a very beautiful town. I've been here a couple of days now and I love it already. The people are very nice, the food is amazing, and you can just walk around for hours with your camera and explore this place. The home of X Photography is a specialist Fujifilm store and gallery space located in the heart of the city, as well as stocking all of the usual Fujifilm bodies and lenses, even some classics as well. They have a very specialist gear such as uh, cages and all of those bits and bobs. Moving up to the gallery, there is enough room for around 35 images on the wall, maybe a bit more. And every three months they rotate who they display in the store. Now it's my turn, at the end of September onwards it'll be someone else, and generally that's how it works. All the printing is done in-house in their print lab downstairs, and as a bonus, this place has a very beautiful view of the river and the bridge on the terrace at the back. So now that we know a bit more about the place, let's quickly talk about how I actually got from you know, an initial idea to having a gallery. So let's go back about four months. A guy named Sergen who works at the store reached out to me and said, look, I've been a long time follower. I love your work and I think it will fit into the gallery, it will bring a nice change to the usual stuff that they have, and is it something that you would want to do? After a bit of back and forth, I said yes, sounds amazing, and then we started to talk about ideas. There were a few different concepts, but the main concept that stood out the most was a London-themed gallery. Once the concept has been confirmed, the next job was to actually put together the images, and this is where I didn't run into a big issue, but it could have been a big issue, because you see, up until maybe two years ago, all of my photography has been in portrait orientation because I was shooting for Instagram, just like all of us do, right? And it's only like, as I've said in the last couple of years, that we've doing YouTube and actually being more uh, mindful of my compositions that I started to shoot more in the landscape. And for this gallery, the images had to be 50% uh, portrait, 50% landscape, just so they can physically fit into the space. And honestly, if I didn't you know, start shooting landscape over the last couple of years, I would have struggled with pull, pulling together enough images that were both portrait and landscape. So a lesson going forwards is that I am now gonna be even more actively um, aware of my compositions and will ensure that I will only take a portrait photo if that composition actually requires it and not because it's gonna end up going on a mobile first social media platform. But anyway, then I had the task of going through over 3000 photos from the last five years and then picking out 35. Now, overall, I was only looking for a selection of things. Obviously, I had to like the image as the first one, but also the image had to have some kind of a story, not all of them, maybe one or two. Um, the image had to be visually pleasing. Um, and the image had to shout London. The whole point is that when all of these photos were together and someone would walk around the gallery and look at the whole collection, then they can walk away with, let's say, a complete image of moments in London. Now let's talk about the actual evening itself, which was yesterday. I'll be honest, aside from the time lapse that you're probably watching, I didn't really get any photos or videos or any footage of the evening itself. So many people have turned up. Some of these people have come from very far away. The last thing I wanted to do is run around and get footage and actually not pay attention to the very people who came to see my work. So all of my attention was on the people that were there. Now, I do realize that obviously most of you will never be able to physically make it to the gallery, mostly because most of you are in the US or in the UK and just not in Germany. So for the rest of this video, I'll just quickly talk you through a couple of images which are notable and which have an interesting story behind them. And then after that, I'll show you the rest of the gallery. So at least you can get an idea of what the gallery looked like from the comfort of your own home. Now, as I already mentioned, the gallery is called London Moments and it's a collection of moments in London over the last five or so years. None of the photos are staged. There's nothing posed, there's no models. It's literally a labor of love walking, 
you know, mile after mile around the city and getting these photos. Some of these photos, you know, it's taken me like three months to get one good photo. Other images, I took two or three within a matter of an hour. But then that's just how it is when you're out shooting. Um, obviously they're all uh, shot in raw and then I edit them using my presets, link below if you wanna try them out. Um, and generally that's about it. Now let's go to the first image, which is of the Mustang driving through a uh, tower bridge or on tower bridge. Now from an aesthetic point of view, the photo is pretty good already. We have good light, we have a good subject, we have good composition and overall it's, I wouldn't say it's not repeatable, but you know, what are the odds of a Mustang, a classic Mustang on tower bridge without any other cars there? It doesn't happen very often. The cherry on the cake, however, which at least in my opinion, makes this my favorite photo that I've taken, or certainly that's in the gallery, is that about a couple of months after I posted it, a guy reached out and he said, no way, this is me, this is my car, and it's actually me and my son in the car, and we were driving to sell it. So that photo is literally the last existing picture of them in that car before it was sold. Um, so for them, it obviously means quite a lot. Sent them the photo, they were you know, over the moon with it, and to me, it's such a cool story about that image. Moving on, we have the stag and the sun coming through the cloud in Richmond Park. Now, to those who are not from London, this is actually in London. Richmond Park is a huge park full of wildlife that's located in South London. It's that big that can take you hours to even just walk around it, and there are certain parts of it you can get lost, and it literally feels like you are in the countryside. Now, on that particular morning, I do remember it was very boring, very gray, very cloudy. I had a bit of a headache and I got up for sunrise, which obviously was a disappointment. I was walking around for about an hour. I was fed up, I was tired, hungry. And I was like, you know what, I'm done, I'm going home. However, I thought, you know what, I'm here, let me give myself another 20, 30 minutes, and I forced myself to stay and just go to a particular location which I know can have a good sunrise if it does happen. As I got there, I could see that the cloud was starting to lift, some fog appeared, and I thought, you know what, maybe we have something. So I got my lens out of my bag, uh, the 50 to 140, put it on the camera. At that point, the sun was a bit more prominent through the clouds, and I wanted to take a bit of an abstract photo of the sun and the trees. As I started to compose, the stag literally appeared out of nowhere, and then the sun became stronger, the whole image became warmer, and I got the shot. Now, some would say it is complete luck, I agree, um, but I also say you make your own luck because if I decided not to stay, I would have been at home and I would have been none the wiser and probably in a bad mood because I would have wasted my morning. So the moral of this particular photo is if you are feeling like giving up or you can't be bothered, give yourself an extra 20, 30 minutes because you might get something good. Okay, that is all. I know I've been chatting for a while. I can talk about the other photos as well, but we'll be here forever. So now I'm gonna show you a montage of the rest of the images and the gallery, um, and then I'll be back with you in a couple of minutes.
Okay, that is all. So to wrap up, a huge thank you to the home of X Photography here in Germany for making all of this possible. A huge thank you to everyone who's come yesterday, especially those who traveled literally across the country and got hotels overnight. And a huge thank you to you who's watching right now because without you and watching my videos and liking my photos and chances are I wouldn't be sat here um, making this. Also apologies for my voice, Echo Plus, I've been talking all day yesterday so it's definitely gone. Oh, before I go, the images in this gallery are there until the end of September and once the gallery is over they will be for sale as one of one limited edition prints from the gallery. They'll come with like a certificate and all that kind of stuff as well. Now, I will not be dealing with that. It's actually the guys at the gallery who'll be dealing with that. So I'll put an email or a contact down below. So if you do want a, you know, to reserve a copy of one of these prints, get in touch with them and then they will sort everything else out. Okay, that's all from me today. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope you're doing good and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.